today cook an extremely rare Japanese A5 Wagyu brisket. But this thing weighs over 30 pounds, so I'm gonna need a hand. This thing looks insane, let's do it. If you don't already know my friend Max, now you do. You've probably seen him doing crazy experiments with meat or driving to well-known restaurants and cooking against them in their own parking lot. Nick, I'm ready to go. But this thing is massive, we're gonna need to pull an all-nighter. And we really gotta make sure we don't overcook this. Well, it did take a few months to get from Japan through my friends at the Wagyu shop. It came from Japan. So we definitely can't mess this thing up. But Max, what is it that makes this thing so expensive and rare? Well, first and foremost, this thing is massive and the marbling is insane. While domestic cattle will have briskets around 15 pounds, this one over here is over twice the size. Which means Japanese Wagyu cows are way bigger than normal domestic cattle. <laughs> Because it's so rare, this cut right here could sell for thousands of dollars. There are only two briskets per cow, which is why this is so hard to get. We've got the rarest of the rare in front of us right now. But before we get a prep, we are catching up to Gordon. Right now, I'm seriously worried. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's midnight and it's pitch black outside, so toss a like on this video. Let's get started. We'll start by just trimming all this plastic off our brisket. Being very careful not to slice into the brisket right now. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up. Middle? Just cut into the meat like immediately. What are you doing? <laughs> this thing is absolutely massive. We have this rib meat right here. We have the fatty point section and the more lean flat. But this is anything but lean. To begin trimming, we'll flip it over. And the goal here is to remove most of the fat from the point and leave about a quarter inch of fat on the flat. A little bit of a tongue twister. What's amazing to me is how incredible the marbling clearly is. I mean, we haven't even trimmed into it yet. And look at that. That is ridiculous. To begin, we're gonna start trimming up the point section. The entire point of trimming this brisket is to make sure that the whole thing is nice and even. We wanna make the cooking process as perfect and even as we possibly can. We wanna remove a lot of this thick fat from the point. As we continue to trim this brisket, you can see that we're starting to expose more and more of that beautiful marbling. For any of these flabby extra bits as well, we're just gonna to wanna to trim those off too. This whole thing should look nice and clean. This whole area here is called the flat and we wanna trim so that there's about a quarter inch of fat across the whole thing. Again, just as we carve this whole thing, it's very evident why people don't see these often and why they cost several thousand dollars. Not only is this thing massive, but the more we cut, the more marbling we see and the more beautiful it gets. Well, hello, beautiful. Most people will never taste or even see a piece of meat like this in their life. And I think Max and I both feel pretty lucky that we're with this thing right now. Absolutely. Not gonna lie, we're starting to get a little bit confused about what exactly we're cutting up here, but we're just doing our best. Because the brisket's so big, there's extra parts on it. It almost seems like there's just more stuff coming off all the sides, so we're trying to navigate through the whole thing to make sure we have a nice, clean brisket to cook. Yeah. So we've continued cutting the brisket, and if you look here, there's just so much fat. And we have to keep trimming that off, or it's just gonna be a pool of melted fat. This is ridiculous. As we continue cutting, it's finally starting to resemble a normal brisket. To finish up the trimming of our brisket, we'll do one final slice here, just to really clean up the edge. This flat section is usually extremely lean, but this is far from it. I just cut this piece off. Look at that marbling. It is insane. We're all trimmed up, kind of seasoned. We seasoned the brisket generously with Osmo and freshly cracked black pepper. And we had a little fun with it too. Then it was time to get it on the grill, but it was one in the morning, so we had to be quiet. We'll see you in the morning. It's 8 a.m. We did not get much sleep. It's the middle of the night. I'm sleeping in my car to tend to this brisket. We can't mess this up. Well, let's take a peek at the brisket. Clearly, the brisket looks fantastic, so for now, we're going to close this down. But we still have all those trimmings. Let's head inside and render them up. So we have all this fat. We're going to turn it into tallow. We're going to melt all this stuff down because this right here is liquid gold, and we might as well use it in the rest of that cooking process. As long as it's friable or edible, we're going to make it deliciousable. With beef this nice, we can't waste a single bit. We're turning our heat to low and letting it slowly melt down. Now you see why we call it liquid gold. It is now 11-11. It's 11-12. Damn it. Brisket's been going for another couple hours. This spark looks incredible. Time to wrap it up to finish the cooking process. Max is gonna take off the entire rack so we can bring it inside and wrap it all up. I can tell a brisket's gonna be good when it's already juicing on me. Don't forget the juice. <laughs> And we haven't even finished yet. We'll place the brisket onto the butcher's paper in the middle of our board. Now we have all this rendered fat. We're just gonna pour it right on top. This might be the fattiest brisket ever made. And at this point, it's finally time to wrap up our entire brisket. We wanna make it nice and tight, correct? Very tight. Oh God. Tight, 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 yeah! This is gonna trap in all the moisture and keep it super tender. Now we'll slide it back onto our tray because it's time to bring this thing back into the smoker. This is gonna go back in the smoker for about two hours to finish up the whole cooking process. After resting for quite some time, our brisket is ready to be carved. And as you can see from here, this thing's gonna be juicy. I think we got ourselves a squirter. Manny, you're fine. Get out. 
First things first, we really carefully have to unwrap the entire brisket. It's so delicate at this point that it could easily tear and break if we're not gentle. We're gonna carefully slide out the paper, which as you can see has soaked up all sorts of juice. Okay, it's finally the moment of truth. Nick, do the honors. Here we go. After all that waiting, I'm gonna lift up the brisket and spin it around to give you that beautiful juicy action. We've got a squirter, folks. What did she say? It's time now after all this waiting that we give you what you deserve. Some brisket B-roll. Now that we've shown you how juicy this is, let's take some slices. So this here is the flat section and we're making sure we slice against the grain. The flat section is usually extremely lean, but as you can see, this is juicy. It holds up on its own weight as I drape it over Max's finger. But it's extremely tender. As you can see on the lining on the outside, we also have a fantastic smoke ring. Max, what the hell is a smoke ring? It's a beautiful pink color, which shows that we've developed some great smoky flavor. Now we're gonna slice into the point, which is easily the best part of the brisket. I mean, that is juicy. The marbling here is just ridiculous. I mean, check out all that juice. We're also gonna remove this top area here and slice up some mouth-watering burnt ends. I mean, just check these things out. Extremely tender, super juicy. We got that smoke ring. These are amazing. Max, your eyes look really good. Thanks, bro. Before we taste, looking at this meat, I have to ask the question, is it worth getting no sleep? We'll find out. Good work. That's pretty good. Wow. The flavors are melting on my tongue. <laughs> Extremely tender. You could eat it without teeth. I'm okay. crying right now. You get that smoke flavor. It's subtle, not too intense, but you definitely get it, right? It's a lot of fat, too. Like, not in a bad way. I just don't think you could eat as much of this as you could a normal brisket. It's extremely rich. But in the best way possible. I agree. One last time, I want to remind you to smack the like on the video. And make sure to go subscribe to Max, because he makes a lot of cool stuff. I've wanted to cook one of these things forever, so thank you, Nick, so much for the opportunity. That was amazing. Let's do this again sometime. <laughs> <laughs>